In this video, we're going to demonstrate the use of the Java Mail API to send an email message using an EGL solution. So we started with a new workspace. And in the new workspace, we're going to click on the workbench icon. We want to make sure that in a workspace that the build automatically feature is turned on, and it is. Our send mail service is going to be a Tomcat service. So we have to create a new Tomcat server. In the Apache folder, it's Tomcat 6. On my machine, my Tomcat installation is somewhere in the C colon backslash op backslash Apache directory. I'll click browse to find it. There it is. That looks good, and uh, that looks good. Uh, we'll create the server. Now, as soon as I create a server, I want to make sure that I can start and stop Tomcat. So I'll start Tomcat, and its status is started. That looks good, and I'll stop Tomcat, and its status is stopped. That looks good. And then I'll go to the console and turn off the display of the standard output and the standard error. We want to close the four extra projects that are in our workspace that are com.ibm.egl.rui. The only project we want open is com.ibm.egl.rui underscore 2.0.2. And we'll create a new project. The project's called sendmail.rui. That looks good. And that looks good. We'll create the new project. Now in the project, in the source code, we want two EGL packages. The first package is going to be called libraries. That's libraries with an S. Our second package is going to be called services. That's services with an S. And in the libraries package, we're going to create a new library that's called sendmail lib. And this is going to contain the bulk of our code to access the Java Mail API. Now we're going to create a service in the services package. And the service is going to be called send mail. And it's going to be a SOAP service. That looks good. Create the service. We're not going to do anything with the source code right now, but we're going to be able to deploy our project to a target dynamic web project. We'll create the project now. The project's called Send Mail, and its runtime is Apache Tomcat. That looks good. And that looks good. We'll create the project. We want to make sure that we save the EGL deployment descriptor after we create the target project. And then we can deploy. So right now we're deploying the default web service with Tomcat to make sure that it deploys properly. Now, as always, when we deploy to Tomcat, Tomcat is going to end with a status of restart. So we need to restart the Tomcat server. Then we need to go looking for the WSDL that's been generated for our project. So there's no code in the library. There's no additional code in our service. Our deployment descriptor is correct. We'll go looking for the WSDL, and we'll go ahead and run it without any customization to make sure it works. We'll test with Web Services Explorer and look for the operation that is called function name. And it has no request parameters, so we'll just press go. And this will show that our web service is working before we go and customize it. Okay, so that's the good status, a good response. Everything looks good. 
Now we'll go about customizing it. In order to use the Java Mail API, we have to have a jar called mail.jar, and we see it's missing from our target dynamic web project. We'll go ahead and copy it and paste it to web content, web INF, LIB. That's where all the jars go. And we'll make sure that it copied. There it is, mail.jar. We also need to fix up one small thing in EGL using a Java source code. And we'll create a Java program that's called Send Mail Utility. We'll create a Java package in our target project. And the package is going to be called Utilities. That's Utilities with an F. And then we'll paste in the Java code. Now, the Java code that I'm talking about is some additional code that enables us to be able to use EGL to send mail. This is the only Java piece that we really need. Uh, it brings in the Java Mail API. It has a method called send message, which takes a transport and a message. Uh, the send message method actually uses the recipients in the message to send the message. And then the rest of this we'll actually create with EGL. Let's see. The next part is we have some of our library that's filled out now. And we'll be able to explain that. This is our library. This is the actual source code. It's a basic library. And there are certain constants that we have. Some of the constants are in an EGL file called SMTP config, and some of them here, at, some of them are here at the top of our library. The send message function actually sends a message. This is going to be used by our web server. We first start off with having the password-based authentication with a user ID and a password for our SMTP service. And we set up some properties that we'll be able to pass to the session. We want the uh, authorization. We want the host name. Uh, we're using standard port. And we're also using the submitter. Then we create a session. And you notice that this is all done in EGL. We'll create a, a to address. And we'll create a from address. And then we'll create the message. And notice that the message, the kind of message, is a MIME message. And then we'll fill out the different properties of the MIME message and save our changes. Then we'll create the transport. And the transport is SMTP. And then we'll use our small piece of Java code to send the message. And the last piece is actually to close the transport. Now, some things that require some explanation is that all of the parameters for the library are, sent, are passed as one record. That's where it's sent from. It's where it's sent to uh, the subject and the content. So all we have to do is create a record and then send the message. Now, we're going to use external types of address and internet address. And notice that internet address is a kind of address. It's important to use the extend keyword. Uh, we used password authentication. We used properties. We used a message. And then also the, uh, I'm sorry, the session. And then the message. And then this, my message is a kind of message. So we, used to, we have to use the extends keyword. Then we have recipient type and the transport. And then finally, our a little bit of Java code, which is the send mail utility. So we have external types for all that so that we can write our code to send messages all in EGL. So that's it for the libraries package in EGL. Now let's go to the services package. This is the full source code for our service. Since most of the complexity is built into the library, 
our send mail web service and our contact us operation, uh, we're using just two parameters, the subject and the content, because the recipient is always going to be the same, and who it's sent from is always going to be the same. When someone contacts us and fills out a contact us dialog box on our website. The subject is actually passed as a parameter and then put into the message record, the simple message record. The content is passed as a parameter and put into the simple message record. And then that record is sent to the library to send the message. That's the extent of our web service code. Now, having done all that, we're going to go ahead and deploy the EGL project again. And if we've done everything properly, we should be able to send a message using the Java Mail API. After we deploy, again, Tomcat is going to be in a status of restart. So we have to restart Tomcat. Then we'll go and find the WSDL file. and test with Web Services Explorer. Now this time, in Web Services Explorer, we should have a Contact Us operation, and it has the two uh, request parameters of the subject, we'll put in video, and the content. This is a demonstration of the Java Mail API. And I'll press Go. And Go will actually send the message. And we'll see our status. So our status has no error messages or exceptions. And let's go to my mailbox and see if we have a message. And yes, I have a message. And if I open the message, we'll see that the subject really is video. And the content of this message is, this is a demonstration of the Java Mail API. Thanks for watching.